Hello, Alkalites, and welcome back to After Plague. Today, I am continuing my Inktober series with days 15 through 20. That doesn't sound like the right amount of dates, but I'm pretty sure it is. Days 15 to 20. Anyway, today's first prompt is Fog. For those who don't know, I thought the Inktober prompt list this year was absolute garbage, so I'm following the Darktober prompts instead. So day 15 for Darktober was fog, and I was trying really hard to figure out how I was going to make this look foggy without doing different layers of opacity, because I try not to use gray in my Inktobers. I like to only use black and white like I'm illustrating with a technical pen. So I decided doing this hatching that would fade as it moves backwards further into the environment and also as it moves up higher would make it look like it was foggier. And I think that this ended up relatively successful. I'm, I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. So I started with those like furthest back, really skinny trees, just making them as light as possible. And then as they moved forward, I did this darker hatching um, and especially going darker from the bottom to the top of the tree. Uh, and then I, I, of course, did the same with the road, keeping it the darkest towards the camera and then fading it as it went back. And I wanted the figure to be in silhouette. So right now he's just plain black. But later I go on top of him and uh, add in some of that hatching to make him look like he's hidden in the fog. Um, the way that I did these trees, I actually used the lasso tool to make the shape of the tree uh, into a selection and then hatched in from there uh, because I thought that would be the easiest way to maintain that hatching while keeping within the lines. I think it gave these trees like a really interesting quality to their branches, like their branches look like they have weight and they also look sharper and more angular than they probably would have if I had done them by hand. Uh, I added in the road details in white just to really make clear that this was a road. The side pieces, the, the ground, I wanted to make quite a bit darker so I did that as well with some dark bushes. Um, the most challenging part was finishing off the illustration because I felt like it looked foggy, but I felt like there should be some floating mist in the air. So I tried to add in the illusion of like this floating mist a couple times. I ended up going with like a really light touch, thin floating mist. I think it looks okay. I'm not sure it was fully effective. There you have it, day 15, fog. For day 16, the prompt word was grim, and I was unfortunately plagued with some technical difficulties. So I decided what better word to uh, follow for grim other than the Grim Reaper. So I thought I would do this um, interesting pose where the Grim Reaper was reaching out towards you, which was quite challenging because I've drawn bones before, I've drawn skeletons before. Um, it's something I actually really enjoy doing. I have some like sketchbooks filled with anatomy drawings, mostly of bones and muscles. Um, but I had never really drawn them in action before. I'd drawn them, you know, palm up, palm down. But I've never really drawn them doing anything other than being like a flat, neutral, open hand. So having to figure out the angle of these bones and the, the foreshortening of the fingers and stuff, it was absolutely the thing that took me the longest. It was a total nightmare, um, but I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, of course, I wanted to add in that classic Grim Reaper skull face, and I gave him his scythe as well, because I thought it would be cool to like have this shape behind him. I thought that it would um, really make a nice silhouette if I, if I used his scythe behind him. Um, so the technical issues. I had a problem where I was drawing, a pop-up showed up on Photoshop, and then <laughs> without thinking, I clicked no, and that pop-up was saying, do you want to save your unsaved document before you close it? And I had said no. I spent so long trying to find recovered documents, but it turns out Photoshop doesn't recover documents if you close it of your own volition and it doesn't crash. So I was so upset, and it was, it was, right before I had finished it too. So the, the, the options were like start over or what I did, which was I went to my recording. Thankfully I was recording. I took a screen cap of like the last full image, which was horrible resolution. It was so low res. And I drew on top of that to finish it. So if that one looks more low res than the others, that is why I was so upset about it, but it turned out fine. I just, ugh. I'm, I'm having flashbacks just thinking about it. I really like the texture that's on all of the bones. Here is day 16 Grim. 
Day 17 was scales. So obviously I wanted to draw this mermaid. I made her look a little bit intense by giving her like the, the whites of her eyes blacked out and I also gave her little tiny fangs. Um, oddly enough, this illustration was actually extremely popular with Instagram. I'm a, I'm a big fan of like looking into analytics and stuff. And for some reason, this got like eight times the impressions of my usual illustration. So this one was very popular. Um, so I added in these little like blotchy ink style scales on her. I think they turned out super cute. Um, that's all I really needed to do to give the impression of scales was these tiny little blotches. And I think they turned out really nice. Um, plus the inky black water I really liked as well. So that was day 17, scales. Day 18, the prompt was teeth, so I decided to do this wolf, but I gave him extremely large, extremely sharp teeth. Um, he kind of looks like a cross between a wolf and a bear. I think his ear looks very bear-like. Um, but yeah, I, I just decided to give him this big mouthful of teeth. I wish I could have given him more, but I was having a hard time filling his mouth, like filling his mouth with as many teeth as I could. Um, so I settled for just making them unnaturally sharp and large. Um, I, honestly, I had a lot of fun with this one, doing the fur texture, um, just keeping it light and flowing. I did, I'm not sure if it was a mistake, but I have the like edges of the fur not connecting. So when I was trying to fill in the background, it wasn't really working. So I decided to put like this spotlight behind him instead um, and use that as a way to separate him from the background. Uh, I, I did think about like coloring him in white, but no, I decided to just do this spotlight anyway. So that was day 18, teeth. Day 19 was Archer. Sorry if this is a little gross. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I have really no context for what's gross or what's not, but I'm sorry if this is. Um, so I decided to do this like arrow going through somebody's hand. Originally I had drawn like a larger body, but I felt like that didn't really suit the Inktober theme. So, or not Inktober theme, how I'm drawing my Inktober uh, illustrations. I know this technically isn't an archer, but I was having a really hard time trying to figure out how to make an archer spooky without just doing a full-on monster character design, which I'm trying to avoid so that I can make these nice and quick. Um, so I did this like arrow and the feather fletching. And the hardest part was definitely like the foreshortening of the arrow, but I think I got it okay. I really like the blood splatter in this one. So that's day 19, Archer. Ah! My boyfriend actually came home and scared the absolute heck out of me while I was recording. So that's what that was. Uh, anyway, moving on, day 20, the prompt word was drown. So I decided to do this same like inky black ocean that I have been doing with other illustrations. I really like the way like dark black water looks with like a white highlight in it for the ripples and the bubbles and that kind of thing. And I found this really nice floating image on Google of this woman like floating in the water in this big flowy dress. So I decided to use that as a reference for this like floating body that I was uh, illustrating. So this one was pretty straightforward. Basically, I just, you know, drew a person. Uh, I didn't shade her too heavily because I wanted her to be almost like a, a white silhouette, you know, because I thought that would stand out really well against the dark blackness of the ocean. Um, I do think I went a little overboard on the folds in the dress. Better overboard than underboard, right? <laughs> Um, I really like these bubbles that I added in. I like the shape of them. I feel like they actually look like they're underwater. Um, and then again, I, I did this like inky black ocean and I was trying to figure out how to like make the water look like it was turbulent on top and I accidentally used gray. I swear I thought I was using white, but I wasn't. I think it turned out pretty well though um, in the end with that like churning motion that I did with the water. So here I am just adding like a very basic shading on her and also I shade in her hair a little bit. Uh, just so that it stands out from the rest of her body a little bit. I also shaded in the sky with this one just because I felt like um, a bright white sky didn't really suit it that much. So day 20, drown. Last but not least, day 21, the word was witch. So I actually accidentally started working on this while my camera was off. I usually record while I stream, um, but I was working on this uh, before streaming. So also, hey, uh, come join me when I stream. Uh, my username is Afterplague on Twitch. 
and I usually stream Thursday through Sunday starting at 3 p.m., usually for a couple hours. Um, so I did actually miss the first little bit of this, but luckily I got most of it um, on camera. I decided to do this little black cat with a witch's hat. I thought it would be kind of cute to do a witch's familiar sort of situation, but wearing their hat. I made the hat this nice dark pure black uh, to contrast with the shading that I did on the cat's body. I did use a reference image for this one. I'll see if I can find it. If I can, I will put it up on screen now so you can um, see the proper credit for that image. Uh, but basically I just did my my level best to go completely overboard with the hatching because I thought that would make a nice fur texture um, and I really liked it in the image that I was using as a reference. So that's basically what I did. Um, I kept it darker along the edges and then an area where the fur was more spread out I kept it a little bit lighter um, to sort of give the illusion that it's catching the light. I also really wanted to make the fur look like it was actually sticking off the body so all of those hard lines that you see around the edges of the body, I break up with some of that hatching and some of that fur texture. Um, so that's that's basically what I did for this one. It was, it was a lot of hatching, mostly just like an hour and a half of getting the hatching correct because there were so many little lines. Um, but thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave me a like and subscribe to see more content. I upload every Saturday, at least in October. Also follow me on all my social media. I am at AfterPlague on Twitch and Instagram and After underscore Plague on Twitter. Uh, I hope to see you next week. And again, I really hope you enjoyed the video. So this is day 21, Witch, and I hope you survive this post-plague world.